the city of Goose Creek is growing and there's a lot of issues right behind growth. In this edition of Quentin's Close Ups, I talk with one person who wants to solve those issues and more on Goose Creek City Council, candidate Hannah Cox one on one. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel and like Quentin's Close Ups on Facebook. Hannah Cox, welcome to Quentin's Close Ups. Why, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate all you do. You are obviously an operations manager, a Navy veteran. You help wounded veterans and a resident of Goose Creek since 2004. Why now do yes, you want to why now do you want to help citizens of Goose Creek on city council? I just feel like I've just been kind of called to it. Uh, you know, I've I've made a commitment here uh, with with my residents here and my family, and I intend to stay here for a long time. I feel like I'm just kind of a doer. If I want to have, have a say in, in what Goose Creek is for, for the future, for my retirement and for my family's future here, I'd, I'd just like to have a say in it. And I think that I can do a job, good job and, and shape it to be uh, what we want it to be. What is the quality of life right now in the city of Goose Creek? I think the quality of life is great. That's why I'm here. <laughs> Uh, but I bought my first house here in 2004, and uh, I bought it because the vicinity to the Naval Weapons Station, and of course the fantastically low price, the low taxes here. And I bought my second. I moved from there and uh, moved to my current house, and and the same reasons. Those low taxes are are a huge selling point uh, of the area. The a lot of bang for your buck. I feel. Uh, you can get a really nice house in uh, Goose Creek compared to some other areas uh, at a pretty decently low price point. Uh, and also it's a great place to raise a family. We've got good schools and we've uh, got a great community. I'm just really happy to be here. And I want to expand on lower taxes in just a moment, but I have to talk to you about Century Aluminum because okay, this is obviously perfect. a developing story in Goose Creek. Uh, yes. Greg Habib, who is the current mayor of uh, Goose Creek and uh, who I've had on Quintus Close House before and will have back soon, he says this quote, there are small businesses in and around the city of Goose Creek who supply to Century Aluminum. One particular that comes to mind, it's a very significant part of his business. So while he is an employee there, his business is very reliant upon Century Aluminum. Let me ask you this. What particular small businesses in and around uh, Goose Creek that actually supplies to Century Aluminum? Well, honestly, what businesses aren't affected by the loss of Century Aluminum or the potential loss of Century Aluminum uh, with 300 employees, it's, I'd, I'd venture to say that I, I don't think there's many small businesses out there that won't feel the loss from, from a grocery store to a, you know, an oil change venue or a hairdresser or anything in between. I just, I just think uh, it'd be easier to find a list that didn't, uh, that wasn't affected. And I know obviously you're not on, uh, on Goose Creek City Council just yet, but the city, a Century Aluminum official said that they sent a notice to employees that the plant could close on December 31st of this year unless they secure a competitively priced power arrangement. What will be a good arrangement for both Century Aluminum and the surrounding communities? Well, an arrangement where they could stay in business. <laughs> um, I tr I'm trying not to get too involved in the Century Aluminum, uh, I guess, debate. Uh, as I do, if I am blessed with an election, uh, and be and the seat on council. I really, my goal is to go into the seat with a really an open mind. I'm only privy to the information that the general public is. Uh, right. There's a lot of executive session information. There's a lot of contractual information that I'm really not privy to. Right, right. And I'm I'm a fact gatherer. I really uh, just prefer to have all the facts before I. Uh, strike judgment. But to answer your question, I mean, obviously there's, there's a number that they have in mind that they have to send. Uh, they, uh, I'm sure they've crunched it and uh, they know exactly what they're looking for. And Santee Cooper, let me get to the other side. They said this quote, we estimate it would take about 270 million in six to eight years to replace the capacity you now want and increase our operating costs of 80 million to as much as 160 million over that time frame. All costs that would have to be shifted and borne by other customers for the sole purpose of benefiting Century. Let me ask you this, uh, and this might be another tough question, but what should be the capacity right now? I can't really answer the, the exact capacity. And I, again, I don't wanna get into the negotiations between Santee Cooper and, uh, and Century Aluminum. What I do know is I, I, I think everybody wants Century Aluminum to stay in business. 
And I think both, whether it's Gifts Creek or it's Santee Cooper, I think there are people that care and are, are willing to, to make some adjustments. So I'm, I'm interested to see, and like I said, I want to, I want to go forward with a, a semi-clean slate so that I can make responsible decisions. I don't wanna make the irres irresponsible uh, judgments now without having all the facts. Well, what causes do you foresee the other customers getting? Well, just like I said, from what I've read, which is just, uh, you know, public information, uh, I think Santee's ar Santee Cooper's argument is that they would have to raise the prices. If they lowered Century Aluminum's price, uh, that they would have to raise the other customer's price to uh, compensate. Well, let me ask you a basic uh, question, Hannah. What has Century contributed to the Goose Creek economy? Well, anytime you have 300 jobs, uh, that's just a fantastic contribution. Uh, the number is over 93% of our uh, Goose Creek City residents leave uh, Goose Creek to work. Uh, so even the, even Century Limo's not counted in that 93%, I think it's important to know uh, that there would be a significant impact, uh, not only on our economy, which we already discussed, but anytime you have uh, residents that are traveling a further distance, in order to get to a job, then you have all the other negative effects too. You've got you've got added traffic on the road, which all, we all already know that that's a huge issue here. And you you know you've got other effects like children having to change schools possibly if we lose some of those residents. So I think it's a uh, I think the negative impacts are are very clear, and I want to see Century Aluminum uh, succeed no matter what that path is. Now you talk about jobs, the mayor said, obviously the mayor said the city will do everything it can to save the hundreds of jobs impacted and bring back even more. How much should the city bring back as far as jobs? As many as possible. And I think that's, uh, you know, Century Lumen have talked about uh, if everything goes well and in their favor uh, with the power deal, even being able to double the workforce to 600, obviously that would be a great thing for our economy and our residents. Uh, but I think it's important to diversify a little bit. We do not have a lot of industry in, uh, in the Goose Creek area. Uh, we have a lot outside. And uh, like I said, that adds aspects of, of traveling and commuting, commuting and everything. So I think the more diversification we can achieve within Goose Creek, I think we are prime territory. We've got not the three parcels that we did annex into Goose Creek in the Mount Holly area. Right as well as you know, several pars a couple parcels in the Crowfield uh, corporate park that I think is just ripe. Uh, I think there is appetite. I think there, uh, there's many support opportunities in those areas. I think we could, uh, I imagine that some companies that could either support Century Aluminum possibly, or even Boeing or, or Volvo would, would really find that prime territory. And with Goose, Goose Creek's uh, relatively low property taxes, that's a huge deal. Goose Creek has lower taxes than uh, than most of the surrounding area, right. lower than Hanahan, lower than Somerville, lower than North Charleston, lower than North Charleston, so, or North Charleston and Charleston. Right. Uh, so I think we're prime territory and we are a bedroom community. We've got residents right now that are, are hungry for, uh, for work. And you, you talk about obviously support opportunities. Where exactly should they be in Goose Creek? Where physically should they be? Sure, you can talk about that. Like I said, uh, the three parcels that were annexed um, from the from Century Aluminum in that area along Mount Holly and 176, um, as well as the corporate uh, park in Crowfield, I think were our ideal territories. And what are the other ideal territories? that you see right now that could be a possible opportunity? Oh, there's, there's many other great opportunities. Uh, we do have super incentive zones and Oops. incentive zones in, in Goose Creek. Now our super incentive zones are mostly, if you're coming from North Charleston up 52 before you hit 176 right. and, uh, and then you're and to Red Bank and then your uh, regular incentive zones are more along 176 uh, towards like Cane Bay. Uh, so I think that's important. And when a lot of people don't understand when we say incentive zones, right. what that includes is uh, those are reductions in building permits, uh, impact fees, business right. licensing, and even hospitality taxes. So that's what we mean when we say in, uh, incentive zones is a discount on those programs. 
Now, would impact fees help Goose Creek right now? Oh, impact fees are very important for our, our infrastructure and uh, as we grow, uh, continue to grow in Goose Creek. Are they being impact fees are what, what pay for fire stations, for example. Sure. Uh, that's, a, that's a huge part of it. It pays for multiple things, but uh, stuff like fire stations, fire trucks, those are, those are paid by impact fees. As a matter of fact, let's talk about public safety. You said this quote, public yeah. safety will always be Hannah's top priority. Hannah will work to keep uh, our community and family safe by ensuring our police and fire departments are highly responsive, well-trained, well-equipped, and properly funded to recruit and retrain the highly, highest quality workforce possible. Let me ask you this, what are the current response times for police and fire departments in the city of Goose Creek? I think response times are good. I don't have the exact numbers right now. I think that we are, uh, better than the national average. Uh, I think, I can't remember the exact numbers, but we are better than the national average in, in most areas. Um, I think we're approaching uh, in where that fire station four will be built at Carnes. Right. Uh, I think we're getting, we're getting to the point where, where that needs to be built. And I'm so glad that it's, uh, that, you know, plans are being made where that's going to happen in the near future. Now, you talked earlier about those impact fees. How much have those fees increased in the past two years in your mind? In two years? I can't remember when the increase was, uh, but for us, they hadn't been raised since, I think, 1986. Uh, and it was a significant increase, but it was due, uh, I want to say the impact fees were only $200, $300. And uh, for a single family home now, I, uh, I want to say that they're thirty-two hundred dollars for a single family home, and that's important to know because that's you know that's what takes care of a lot of our in infrastructure. And a lot of the complaints people have are things that those impact fees take care of. Unfortunately, um, that increase didn't happen until, like, as you said, a couple of years ago. Uh, a lot of time, I, I feel like it was kind kind of late in the game. Uh, and we're, we're struggling to make up a little bit of lost ground, right? Right now, like I said, $286 doesn't, doesn't cover much as far as impact fees go, as far as fire stations and, and stuff like that. So, uh, I'm glad that they're, uh, where, where they are now so that we can make sure our, our, our services remain high quality. And I, it might be a redundant question, but where should the impact fees go right now for the city? Uh, fire stations are big, um, fire trucks. Uh, stuff like that. And I think I'm, they are a little bit limited. I think they can only go towards certain things. So I don't want to, I don't want right. to misspeak sure. on much more than that, but uh, that is part of it. And let me go back to obviously what you said earlier, public safety will always be Hannah's top priority. Hannah will work to keep our communities and families safe by ensuring our police and fire departments are highly responsive, well-trained, well-equipped, and properly funded to recruit and retrain, retain, that is, the highest quality workforce possible. What is the current funding for recruiting? The current funding for recruiting? Yes, ma'am. I'm not sure exa exactly uh, what those numbers are. How many employees have the city of Goose Creek, in your mind, been able to retain over the past four years? A, a number of, of employees that we've been able to retain? Yes, ma'am, over the past four I'm years? Glad. I wouldn't know an exact number of, of the uh, exact retention rate. Okay. I think it's definitely different between departments. And so I think it's kind of important to break that down. And how would you break that down if you were to be on city council right now? Oh, I'd have to just gather, gather the data. What data and, are you? And break it down per department so that I could give, give a good answer. I really don't like speaking when I don't. I'll, I'll always admit when I don't know the answer. Sure, no uh, worries. I don't ever want to, to mislead anybody with uh, wrong information. Right, no worries. Uh, what data are you looking at right now? The data for? For uh, funding and recruiting and public the, safety. The data I'm looking at, uh, I heard a number, I don't want to re-quote re it, um, specifically sure. in the police department. I think just the general, uh, just the general climate uh, of, of policing and everything that's going on in the world right now uh, is, is hard to compete with. Uh, it's, a, it's a lot to ask somebody to, to be a police officer. And, and uh, I think that's why it's really important that we take really good care of our people so that we can retain the best of the best. And what, Hannah, is your relationship with the police and fire departments in Goose Creek right now? 
my re- I don't have really a personal relationship. I'm definitely familiar uh, with with everybody there. Um, I don't have direct uh, a direct relationship now. And earlier you talked about lower, obviously lower taxes. Let me go back to your website. You said this quote, as a job creating businesswoman, Hannah understands the importance of physical responsibility and will apply her skill set on council. Like they were when Hannah bought her first home in Goose Creek in 2004, taxes must remain low. Hannah will work to keep taxes down and accountability and transparency of government spending high. What policies, Hannah, would you update to make Goose Creek more physically responsible? Fiscally responsible. I think it's just, uh, I think you have an opportunity at every budget uh, meeting to, we, the big part of what uh, Goose Creek City Council and any city council does is approve the budget. So I would work with, um, to ensure that our city administrator and all of our department heads uh, had the tools they needed to operate as efficiently as they possibly can. We could look for it uh, to see if there's any waste. Before we hire anybody new, we need to see if, you know, perhaps technology has changed. Uh, so now something that was done by a, a couple people in a divi- or a department uh, manually is all done online. Well, what can we, how can we better utilize those two people rather than, uh, you know, hiring additional people uh, unnecessarily? So I think, especially as technology changes, we need to constantly assess uh, where our efficiencies lie, how to improve processes, and uh, and get the maximum out of our, our workforce while keeping uh, morale high. Now, what processes would you look at right now? The things I would look at right now are, are some of our business practices uh, okay. as, as far as um, doing business in sure. Goose Creek. I think there's a lot that can be streamlined. Uh, I've, I've talked with the city administrator and she's got some really great ideas. Uh, some of our issues are just spatial issues. I think there's value added by people working together uh, and in just being in the vicinity of one another. Uh, there's several uh, processes, especially uh, you know planning and, and ARB requests, where you know pieces and parts of that process. One guy does does this in public works, and another uh, person does something in admin, and then they all come together to create something. Well, the physical uh, physical space between people can can often make that a lot more cumbersome. So it'd be ideal to find uh, a, a space where they can work together. And I think there's processes uh, in in that that will come as well. Um, I yeah. think if we're going to be business friendly, <laughs> we should we should make it very very easy. And I think there's some really simple changes. I love process improvement. It's uh, something that I uh, do a lot in my job. So I think uh, a good look at that. And again, it's just it never stops. You don't do it do an assessment and then forget about it for five years. It is constantly improving processes and procedures, even if it's down to just the the form that you might use to fill out to get a dumpster permit. Yes. Exactly right. Uh, you, you talk about the processes and obviously assessment and all of these other, you know, convoluted things. What is the one barrier that you would try to break down as far as communication within the city of Goose Creek? Communication barrier within the city of Goose Creek. I think one thing that's become really apparent as I've been meeting new residents and, and trying to introduce myself as a candidate is, a lot of people really have no idea what the what uh, what the city of Goose Creek actually does, mm. uh, what city council does, and even where where Goose Creek is. Uh, you know, it, it's there's a lot of arbitrary lines. Right. Excuse me, put this out of this. Uh, there's a lot of arbitrary lines where Goose Creek ends and something else begins. The fact sure. that Goose Creek High School isn't in Goose Creek. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> in the city of Goose Creek, that is. Um, it's it's very confusing, and and I think a, a education could go a long way as far as uh, as making sure people know know where that goes, and that goes into coordination because a lot of people don't care that that's not Goose Creek and unincorporated Berkeley County. That's why I think it's really important that we that we work with our our county and state elected leaders and leadership within those uh, those entities to uh, to make kind of a seamless transition for uh, a lot of our residents and to work on issues. Because like I said, there's a lot that isn't necessarily the responsibility of Goose Creek. Uh, Goose Creek doesn't own any roads, but that doesn't mean that we can't advocate for their improvement. 
Yes, ma'am. And let me ask you this too, Hannah. Uh, <laughs> this might be a tough question here. Uh, how effective is Goose Creek City Council in your mind? Ooh, that is a tough one. Um, I think dissenting views are important. I think that's where, where good ideas are fostered. I do not want a city council that agrees on everything. Uh, I think that's unproductive. Um, what I do know is you can't be a council of one. If I want to get anything done, then I have to, then I have to work to, to sell my idea, essentially. And just being a dissenting view doesn't do anybody good. Uh, explaining your point um, civilly is really important to me. Uh, I've been asked, you know, what I want to bring to Goose Creek, and that's one of those things. I want to be able to have really, really productive discussions. And uh, sometimes I feel like uh, the discussions aren't as productive. How transparent is the city council? And no dis disrespect to say Greg or Beaver, I love the mayor. <laughs> He's a great guy, but how as, transparent? As why, as yeah. Why. yeah. I, I think they're pretty transparent. I, I think the improvements with live streaming okay. uh, the city council meetings, uh, posting, uh, I've noticed over the past couple of years uh, a, a massive improvement in communication to to residents at, as on readily accessible. You know, the website's uh, improved. Uh, there's a lot more Facebook information. Uh, I'm not on Instagram or Twitter, so I'm not sure okay. <laughs> about that. But I think the information is there. Uh, I think that there's. I'd really like to see a lot more residents uh, uh, care a lot more. And, and you talk about the residents and you talk about obviously meeting the new residents recently. Obviously, Goose Creek is growing at a record pace. How should the city deal with growth with smart growth? Smart growth. Well, absolutely. That is a huge concern with pretty much every resident I speak with. Uh, a lot of people want to be the last resident of Goose Creek. <laughs> they want everything to shut down and everything just to stay. But that's that's not a realistic uh, idea. Uh, I think I think shaping uh, Goose Creek as it grows is really important. Important, and when planned developments occur, to ensure that the builders and uh, that we work closely with the builders to make sure that uh, the residents not only don't suffer a lot of the negative effects of, of growth, but they're really just happy to be here. That some mixed use developments, so that you know, gross, uh, mixed use with, you know, homes and businesses right. so that a lot of residents aren't having to travel to the other side of town to go to a, a grocery store or something. And then you alleviate a lot of other, a lot of other concerns like traffic when you, when things are properly planned and, uh, and developed. What is your con negativity plan, con connectivity con plan for the city of St. Hughes Creek? <laughs> I, I'm sorry, what was the question? Yeah, what is your connectivity plan for the city of Goose Creek? Connectivity like physically? Yeah, you mentioned traffic. Uh, what plans do you have for connectivity? Well, I, a lot of the interest has been in the LCRT, the Low Country Rapid Transit, right. as far as that goes. Uh, I am, I've been looking at that as an option right now. Uh, for, for people that don't know, that's an autonomous bus system that runs essentially from Somerville to downtown. Uh, it's supposed to alleviate a lot of the traffic on I-26. And I think, uh, I think that would be awesome. <laughs> I'd, love to, I'd love to see something like that because even though it doesn't touch Goose Creek, right. uh, it does affect traffic. I drive on I-26 to, to my job uh, in North Charleston, uh, to my office. And so any alleviation of traffic there um, would be fantastic. I'd like to see, see it directly affect Goose Creek. And uh, I know that would be a very costly thing. So I don't like to just throw out pie in the sky ideas without knowing how to, how to pay for it. It is my understanding that a lot of the investments in the LCRT uh, funds from local areas are matched uh, by federal funding. So there's a, I need to do a lot more homework before I can say that's a great idea for Goose Creek to uh, invest in that. There's a lot more information I, I need, but that would be an ideal situation that would alleviate a lot of people's commute and uh, time spent in traffic. And I think it would uh, allow for uh, 
some opportunities as far as business and commerce within Goose Creek if if some of the if we did have some sort of uh, uh, station there that people could uh, get a little foot traffic on. As a matter of fact, you mentioned uh, obviously commerce. Let me talk to you about what you said on your website. You said this quote, with a commitment of cutting red tape and recruiting job creating businesses to Goose Creek, the necessary resources with infrastructure improvements can be realized through new business revenue, while a live work play environment can be more attainable for Goose Creek residents. What job creating businesses would you recruit right now to Goose Creek? Oh, I think we are right for uh, for industry that supports some of our major industrial partners like Volvo and, and Boeing. And, and that's a short list. Obviously, there's a lot more, but I think, I think there's a need for it. I think people are hungry for it. And there is great opportunity here. And, you know, what new business revenue would you help the city create? Well, anytime you bring business in and they take more of the tax burden is a good thing. I really don't want all of our services to be uh, be born uh, bore by the uh, the homeowner in Goose Creek. I'd like some of that some of that burden to be alleviated. And like I think we talked about before, business licenses and and uh, businesses pay a higher tax assessment ratio. Uh, than as far as property taxes go than our residents. So that alleviates some of the burden as well. And when you think, think of businesses, what do you want the developers to bring as far as incentives? Developers bring incentives? Is that what you said? Uh, yes, ma'am, incentives. And I think uh, it goes back to what I was kind of discussing in the plan development. Right. When, when a developer does a, approach the city uh, with a plan, I think we really need to, to push to get everything we can out of that to make it the best, uh, to, to reduce as many of the negative effects of, of growth as we can, uh, as we can achieve, uh, while also increasing the quality of life of those areas by uh, promoting mixed use. And what are the negative effects of uh, growth right now, as you see it in Goose Creek? Negative effects for growth uh, can be school overcrowding. Uh, you know, they're running into that situation at, at Cane Bay, right. where they're having to bus children from, from the Cane Bay schools to even Westview, which, uh, you know, Goose Creek is pretty built out. Um, I even when my son went to Westview, we even discussed with the principal that, uh, that she's like, oh, we're pretty built out, so we don't have to worry, really worry about uh, classroom overcrowding. And then I hear that, you know, the Cane Bay students are having to be bussed in there. So, it, you know, you can never uh, stop planning, uh, for sure. But uh, traffic is one of those concerns as well, of course. And as, as I talk to residents, is, is one of their primary concerns. And how much tax revenue has the city lost in the past four years, in your mind? Tax revenue lost for... The city. The entire city. Um, I'm not sure how you mean. Yeah, uh, how much tax revenue? The city gets a lot of tax revenue, obviously with business development, economic development, and businesses and schools and whatnot. But how much tax revenue has the city lost in the past four years? Uh, well, I'm not sure if I'm answering your question correctly. Uh, I I don't know if you're re uh, referring to the leakage uh, that we might be experiencing. Uh, because so many people have to go outside of the city, uh, sure. we don't have a lot of a lot of uh, you know shopping and, and dining. There's a lot of leakage for the city. I think that the numbers were for 2019, 260 million dollars in leakage, uh, where people had to go to the movie theater right. in Somerville or right. uh, shopping at Target outside of the city. Uh, so that's part of the economic de development plan and and something that I want to push for that that reduces some of that. So we're spending our dollars here at home. And so we you know, can get some of that, that revenue and, and uh, support some of our businesses a little bit better. And how would you push for minority owned businesses to come to Goose Creek? Well, I don't think that you can ever, uh, ever have enough. I think, uh, you know, Goose Creek is, could work on our, our diversity uh, in, in that respect. I think that there's room in maybe the kind of kind of the same concept in the super and uh, regular incentive zones. I think some of those incentives might be able to be utilized and I'm, I'd be excited to kind of discuss more of those options. Sure. Well, Hannah Cox, thank you so much for your time and welcome to Quentin's Close Ups and thank you for the first interview ever. <laughs> I know you don't do uh, all of this, so thank you for your time. I really do appreciate it. Thank you, Quentin. I appreciate it. You're welcome, anytime. Right.